Hi, I'm Nikki Taro, and I'm here in Moon Joyce's studio at her house. Hello. Hi. Hi, Nikki. So, um, um, you're originally not from New Brunswick, right? But you've been um, been here since 2004. Um, tell us about all the places that you've traveled to, because you've been to quite a few places. <laughs> Uh, yes, I've been. Uh, I've lived in many of the provinces of the country. I worked um, as a um, as an artist uh, and as a musician and an educator. Those are my three pretty much occupations. So uh, mostly as a musician, I traveled a lot. But uh, um, that career, I, I don't do that much anymore. Um, I continue to teach art and uh, uh, work in the field of education. So I moved here in 2004, and I, when I uh, finished my studies in Toronto at, at, in education, I had an opportunity to decide where I wanted to live. And I first came to New Brunswick in 1978 to Charlotte County to visit a friend who I worked with at Outward Bound, and that's a, a wilderness program. And uh, uh, my friend Beth Johnston lives in Charlotte County, and uh, she introduced me to the rivers and the, 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 uh, the province. She's an outdoors person as well. And I fell in love with New Brunswick then. And we, she taught me how to pull a canoe, and uh, she showed me, um, she's a great fly fisher, and uh, she uh, introduced me to that, and I hooked myself in the back of the head a few times. Um, and I was really hooked. I think I didn't hook any fish, but I got hooked on New Brunswick. <laughs> so that was back in the 70s. And when I ever had a chance to take a break from where I was working, I used to love coming here. So that when uh, 2003 rolled around and I had an opportunity to decide where did I really want to live and work, um, and I had an opportunity to do some teaching here at UMB, I decided to move here. And since coming here, I just have been so taken by the natural beauty of the province and the variety of the natural beauty. There are so many regions of this province. And I have to say that I never really took landscape painting seriously until I moved here. And so <laughs> uh, I've just uh, I found myself really quite... Um, uh, kind of fallen in love with the the place, mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just preparing for a show f uh, for Gallery 78. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to call it Rivers and Tides because uh, every spring there's a gang of us to get together and we go up to some northern river to paddle, whether it's the Rustagoosh or the Patapedia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I did some drawing and some uh, took some photos up there. And so there are a number of paintings that and I'll show you uh, of that. And the other thing that just blew me away was the Bay of Fundy and the tides. I mean, that's so amazing. And so sea kayaking is another uh, pursuit that I've, um, I've really gotten into since coming here. And um, so we go every August to Grand Manan and sea kayak and, and sometimes Deer Island and around the little, little islands there. And uh, so when we pull up with our kayak for lunch, um, it doesn't, uh, you know, it, it's really, I had to learn this to be careful. If the tide was coming in, make sure my boat was, I pulled it up far enough because, you know, within, by the time lunch is over, my boat could be floating off into yeah. the bay. <laughs> or, you know, sometimes if the tide's going out, docking the, or just, you know, pulling the kayak up and by the end of lunch it's, you know, about 100 <laughs> yards away from the, the yeah. edge of the, edge of the water on a beach. So I, I was just so amazed by that and also by how fast the water moves. Mm -hmm. So as a whitewater paddler of rivers, uh, it's been a real learning curve to see how the tides work and mm -hmm. it's, it's really phenomenal. It's just a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, and then because of the movement of the water and the climate, there is fog, this element of fog, which is somewhat, I've experienced fog before, but never this kind of fog, which can be so localized. It can be on Grand Manan, one end is sunny and the other end is completely mm -hmm. in fog. And then within just a very short period of time, it's gone. 
and the sun is blazing. And it's like, well, you go from this world of, of fog and mist and mystery to brilliant light and the, the light of the east. Eastern Canada, for me, ga is the, the, it's the part of the country that's about the rising sun as opposed to, say, the setting sun. I think the West Coast is having that different kind of light. When you're a painter, and uh, I'm very sensitive to light and the play of light on subjects, and so that's also been a really interesting thing for me to explore is how mm -hmm. light changes, and it, um, it's a dynamic force. And, and uh, combine that with uh, the different you know, geological features of the province. Uh, that's really got me all juiced mm -hmm. up as a landscape painter. Oh. Um, well, I was just looking uh, over here at this yeah. painting that you were just starting. So tell us a bit about um, the technique um, that you do to get from here to here, let's say. Okay. So um, if I have the opportunity, I try to do painting in the location that I'm in. Mm -hmm. That's always the best. I always am most satisfied with what I, I get out of that. But if I can't do it there, then I'll take photographs and I'll bring them back and I'll do uh, sketches perhaps, sort of think about what is it, what is it that caught my eye and how can I translate that in an interesting way? Like, because there's got to be something that, that got me excited. And if I can somehow translate that or, or, or trans, you know, turn it into a, a, a composition, that's what I'll try and do. So um, I'll take a photograph and then I'll find out, you know, uh, look at the bones of it. Um, I've been told by other artists that I'm really a builder. Uh, like I like to build my paintings. So I start off, the first is the um, underpainting, and so I look for what's the, what's the main, what's the main un, uh, color that seems to predominate the painting. And I try and leave a little bit of that color, uh, as I paint over it, I l try and leave a little bit of that to come through. And uh, then the next stage is to, and I'm on the second stage right now where I'm just drafting out uh, the, the subject. And this is on Grand Manan. It's part of the Tide series. And uh, here's my little notebook here. And so I'm working with a photograph. Uh, this is just, a, you know, a, a Xeroxed copy or whatever, just to give me the main, the main um, pieces that I'm going to work with. And so I, um, I sketch it onto the canvas. Um, I don't get too fussy about, you know, making a grid. I, it's just a basic eyeballing that I do to get the, that onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I'll work with this, um, and I'll, um, the next stage will be working with the shapes. And uh, I'll, uh, then I'll do an, uh, another layer of painting of the main shapes and the, uh, it's like a second layer of underpainting uh, and then after that I'll stop, start building it up with glazes and um, bring the, try and get the colors, give it some depth and then detailing is, is kind of my last step. So that's mm -hmm. how I've kind of figured it out for yeah. myself <laughs> um, and uh, so that's where this, this painting is going to go. Ah, yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. working with acrylics too. Oh, okay. yeah. And now we've seen, I've seen quite a few paintings in the house of about sure. uh, about um, the Grand right? Manan. Yeah, in Grand Manan, right? So yeah. this, uh, this is one of them. Um, and so, there, is there a little story in sure. particular about this one? Yeah, so this one actually is going to go, I'm going to hold off on this one just for a second. Sure. Since we seem to have pieces in here that are about rivers, mm -hmm. I'm going to just talk about those for a bit. Sure. And uh, so uh, this one here is from the Nashwalk River, which I li I'm living in Fredericton, so mm -hmm. you know, I'm, one of my favorite things is just in the evening or when I have some time to go up or down the Nashwalk River. And uh, so here's just, you know, a, a typical scene of the flooding uh, of the uh, vegetation flooded 
and these are ferns that are underwater and so I've been cap you know th this notion of what's under the water what's sitting on top of the water in terms of you know flotsam and jetsam mm -hmm. and and then what's reflected off the water um, is a bit of a study for me so that's uh, one piece and then here's another water study from one of the northern rivers and you can see there's quite a difference here this one doesn't have so much of the under what's under the water is what's reflected off the water oh. and uh, almost to the point of abstraction just a very uh, a more brisk kind of, of painting and uh, that's that I'm really enjoying and, and would actually like to move a little bit more into but what I find here is that with water, because water is a moving force, and again that notion of light, light and color that plays off of it, and just this is just a moment, in just to capture that moment, but you still get that sense that it's moving, mm -hmm. and you get to be with that, that moment fixed, mm -hmm. as it were. And then this painting over here is of the Restigouche River, and uh, what I feel about the Restigouche is that uh, this is a, it's a very world famous salmon fishing river. And you know, you have this carpet of trees, the beautiful big hills that surround these ancient rivers. And they really are old. I mean, mm -hmm. these are old rivers. And so they're, they move fast, but they're shallow, a gravelly, the perfect environment for salmon. And uh, so I, I was very, um, uh, um, impressed by in this this is this our spring canoe trip so mm -hmm. you know you got the spring light and the light sort of happened to hit these trees that were just uh, early leafing out um, birch trees mostly and some poplars uh, you get that you know brilliant kind of light and uh, you know the water just sort of gently moving no big no big rapids in this one yeah so you asked about uh, Grand Manan. Yes, uh, I just um, we'll, we'll come back with this story in our next video, which will be right after this one. Thanks for watching.